So the Go iPace app is really simple to use. You download it onto your phone. You just take it with you all the time, as you would do anyway, and it just records your journeys. That's all it does. So you're driving, say, 20, 30, 40 miles a day, which is what most people do. It will record that, and it will show you how often you'd have to charge the car and how much it would cost you. And you will soon work out that you'll save a lot of money driving an electric car. That's one thing. And also that you won't need to be stopping and panicking and charging it all the time when you're driving around. You'll need to charge it once a week. It, you know, it, it's well within its capabilities. And I think it just gives reassurance for people who've never experienced an electric car that it is capable of doing the job you want it to do. I think there's a, an enormous amount of people who are very worried about swapping over to an electric vehicle. They think that it's going to run out in the middle of the night when they've got two kids in the back and there'll be nowhere to charge it. They think it's going to cost them a fortune to, because they had to throw the batteries away after two years. Loads and loads of myths have been you know, casually tossed about about electric cars and only from experience. I'm speaking very much from experience, from driving now hundreds of thousands of miles in electric cars, that that just isn't the case. That the car's technology, for one thing, tells you how much range you've got left and it's very very accurate and it will warn you well before you run out you've got to be you know determined to run out you know I've only done it once and I've made it run out to see what happened it stops but I had to drive for hours to make it run out so you don't you know that isn't a problem and, it, and statistically it doesn't happen all the people who do drive electric cars don't run out on the side of the road so there's quite a lot of fears about range anxiety that you will get the first time you drive an electric car you will have range anxiety everyone does because you've been told you're going to have it about the, by about the fourth time you won't even think about it it won't even cross your mind you just use the car as a car and that's the end of it I think the app is it addresses them in a really simple and easy to use way because a lot of people think well I drive 500 miles every two days and I drive to Scotland every every year and it's I, I, I can't use an electric car it just hasn't have the range and you use that app for a week, two weeks, three weeks, and you'll go, oh, I don't actually drive anything like as far as I think. There's some people, travelling salespeople or, you know, people who are travelling as part of their job that will drive more. But the vast majority of us, literally 95% of us, drive under 20 miles a day. Well, if you're driving around 20, 25 miles a day, you will be charging the car once every two weeks. You know, so it's just... So what the app does is show you that you don't drive as far as you think. We all assume we drive much further than we think. So I think uh, in this country we are getting prepared for the mass adoption of electric vehicles. We're certainly not ready yet, but there are far more places to charge now than there were, for instance, five years ago. I mean, seriously more, as in hundreds of thousands. So there's a lot of car parks that now have chargers in them. There's a lot of uh, hotels, restaurants, cafes, supermarkets that have chargers in the car parks. And that makes a big difference. And so that's got to be rolled out to a much greater extent. But certainly things like the national grid, have said very clearly they're completely ready and capable of charging you know, five million electric cars today and with a little bit of adaption to the way the grid operates they can charge more. So it's, I don't think that's going to be a problem and we just need more chargers. So the rest of the world, it really depends on which country you're talking about. So certainly most of uh, Western Europe is, has got an amazing uh, charging network all over, the, all over the, every country. I know you can drive from the Arctic Circle in Norway to Gibraltar using electric car chargers, and people have done it. Uh, the United States has, an, has a, a growing and rapidly growing uh, charging network over the whole country. Certain cities have amazing uh, level of car charging, other ones less so, but it's being rolled out everywhere and everyone can see that this is coming anyway. So there's a lot of legislation about new buildings, which if you build a new building and it's got car parks, you have to have chargers fitted. China, you can't build a car park in China without an electric car charging point. There's a, it's, a, it's a new law that's been passed. So it's definitely coming. I think the really big thing that manufacturers can do is to develop relationships with the charging companies and that because that the, the, the grit that I see in the system at the moment is the using public charges particularly in this country some countries it's mandatory that you have one tag on your, your car keys and you can use any charger California is a good example of that so it doesn't matter who runs the charger you pay for the electricity but it much it's much easier to access it in this country I have a wallet full of I think 12 cards for different charges which is 
rapidly going out of fashion. You know, that's how it started. And soon you'll be able to pay with a debit card, which is what everyone wants. And so that, to, uh, for a car manufacturer to facilitate for their customers, an easy way of doing that. So, i.e. one fob that charges everything, and I know that's something Jaguar are talking about, that you want to be able to access any charger wherever you find it and just plug in and not have to think about it. That's really important. So I'm not someone who's driven a great deal of Jaguars, but I'm someone who's driven a great deal of electric cars. And the first time I got on the I-Pace, I, I, basically I think I said, this is nice. <laughs> because it's a beautifully made car and, and regardless of what makes it go along it's a real joy to drive it's really easy to drive it obviously goes like stink if you want it to but you can drive it gently and really make it go a long way it's really smooth and comfortable the good clue for a, a gentleman of my age is when you get out of a car whether you grunt or not so quite a lot of cars like when I get out you do a bit of grunting it just happens it's the thing that happens with age I didn't make the slightest gruntette getting out of an eye pace I just went I got out stood up and went oh it's a really, really comfortable car. And that's after driving for two or three hours. That's a really good sign. Beautifully designed, beautifully made, really competent machine.